In this presentation, I'm going to show the principal results about the kinetics of self-assembled porphyrin nanostructures at the liquid-liquid interface for solar energy conversion. I'm going to highlight the different nanostructures that we obtain at the liquid-liquid interface, a possible mechanism that explains the behavior of this process, and how we are able to control the kinetics in order to select one of these structures. The way we synthesize this self-assembled interpartial porphyrin is the following. We put into contact two immiscible solutions, an aqua solution containing the porphyrin and an organic solvent that in this case is the alpha-alpha 3 4 Spontaneously, a film is formed at the interface of these two solutions and afterwards we replace remnant porphyrin solution by buffer solution. And then if we add an electron donor at the organic phase and an electron acceptor in the aqueous phase and we perturb the system by light, we are going to obtain some photoelectrical responses. Nevertheless, at this stage of this research, we are focused on determining how is the kinetics of this self-assembled process and if it is possible to control these kinetics. The way we studied this process was by monitoring the sorting band of the porphyrin by UVB absorbent in total internal reflection mode. Thus, we have to build an experimental setup consisting in a series of lenses and mirrors that hit the interface at a certain angle and then we collect the reflected light at the detector. Our biphasic system consists of a organic solution of 3 fluorotoluene and an aqua solution of porphyrin lithium citrate adjusted at a desired pH. We injected a stock solution of the porphyrin into the aqueous phase, then we stirred and then we started to collect the data. In this slide, I present the main results of this study. In this plot, we can see how is the evolution of the porphyrin through the time and also we can compare it through the spectra of the porphyrin at the bulk of the solution. We clearly see that this spectra is different. If we mm, analyze the maximum of absorbance of the porphyrin, we clearly see that at the beginning the porphyrin shifts towards the blue and then it shifts towards the red. Based on these results, we divided the process in three steps. In the first step, the porphyrin is absorbed until it reaches a critical concentration. After that critical concentration, the JR gate is formed, and after a certain period of time, the HR gate is formed. We determine that the base condition of pH is 5.8, and this process only happens when the interfacial concentration of the porphyrin is bigger than 2.6 nanomoles per square centimeter. Based on the previous results, we determined that the HR gate and the JR gate are competing for the free monomers available at the interface. Thus, we propose two models. In the first model, both aggregates J and H requires a nucleus in order to be formed, whereas in model 2, only the HR gate requires a nucleus in order to be formed. Through mathematical modeling and numerical fitting, we were able to determine that the model 1 was the best for explaining this dynamic behavior, as we can see in this plot. Finally, by changing the concentration of citric acid, we were able to select one of these aggregates. At high concentration of citric acid, only the J aggregate is formed, whereas at low concentration of citric acid, the dominant aggregate is the H as we can see in these plots that correspond to the UVB's monitoring of the self-assembly process from low concentration of citric acid to high concentration of citric acid and also by the ex situ characterization of the fields obtained at low concentration of citric acid and high concentration of citric acid. If you want more information about this study, please contact me through this email or also you can have a look at our recent publication whose reference is shown here in this slide. Thank you so much.